You talked about ketones a bit in that last answer, so let's move on to a, a question about ketones from Austin. Will consumption of exogenous ketones disrupt a fasting state? And I know that there's been a lot of work in producing ketone supplements. Um, so that's the question, I think, is will, will that disrupt a fast? It's certainly a question that I've had myself. Um, I've, I've actually tried um, a, a beta-hydroxybutyrate um, ester. So beta-hydroxybutyrate is the major circulating ketone body that's generated um, when your body starts to go into ketogenesis. Uh, a lot of things do happen when you're fasting, and that's one of them. So basically, anywhere between it takes anywhere between you know 12 to 36 hours for your liver to deplete the glycogen. Mm -hmm. And once that's depleted, what ends up happening is you immobilize fatty acids from your adipose tissue. Um, they go to the liver, and they're actually used to to make ketone bodies. So you're you're oxidizing the fatty acids now, using them to make ketone bodies like beta-hydroxybutyrate, those ketone bodies can then be used as an alternative energy source themselves. Which is incredible. I mean, just on that point, the fact that, you know, the, the, the analog I've heard is, you know, you're basically turning your body from a, you know, burning gas to diesel. It's like a completely different fuel, glucose to, to ketones. It's amazing that our bodies can even do that. And in some ways, uh, you know, it's a preferred fuel for, for different organs in our body, right? Uh, it, it seems as though it might be. Um, yeah, it certainly brain. seems to be um, metabolically efficient. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it takes less energy to use uh, a ketone body compared to glucose. So, so it's energetically favorable in that sense, which which is is nice. Um, so it doesn't sounds like it doesn't really interrupt a fast. It's sort of part of the natural. Well, so yeah. Let me so I'll okay. let me continue. So that <laughs> yeah. is that was the natural <laughs> phenomena I was explaining, okay, right? Got it. Got it. Now what? Um, what ends up happening, so there's been about five clinical studies that I've, that I've um, read mm -hmm. that have, they're mostly clinical studies with exogenous ketone esters. And just for, for the audience, exogenous meaning um, not produced in the body. You're exactly. Taking, you're, taking, you're, you're, you're taking it externally. Exactly. You're yeah. taking a, like a supplemental yeah. form of yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying that. So the, the exogenous ketone esters... Um, that are taken, basically, a lot of the studies that have been done have been looking in the context of like athletic performance. Mm -hmm. um, but they also look at other metabolic parameters, which is interesting because that's kind of where you can find some of this data if you look carefully. Right. Um, and, and within these five studies, there have been, um, it seems to be that what, what's been shown is that the exogenous consuming, for example, the exogenous beta-hydroxybutyrate, the supplemental beta-hydroxybutyrate ester, um, it ends up it increases the the blood levels, you know, beta hydroxybutyrate pretty pretty high, um, but it also seems to decrease circulating free fatty acids, which suggests mm. you're not immobilizing fatty acids from your adipose tissue to be used to make your own, which means you may not be getting the benefit of what you would call fat loss, right? Um, and that and that's a regulatory loop that occurs in the body um, so it you know when you're when you're when your beta hydroxybutyrate levels get high enough you know your body says okay we don't need to make any more of these so it stops the immobilizing Got what's it. called lipolysis the, the cutting of the fatty acids from the adipose tissue right interesting so your body's stopping you from making too much right so that does seem to happen okay um, but then again the exogenous ketone esters don't last for that long and if you're exercising or doing physical activity it it's dose dependent. So the more the more active you are, the quicker you use up those ketone bodies. Yeah, it's interesting because um, you know I know that when I'm practicing fasting, which which gets my ketones way up, and then I'm doing a ketogenic diet, which does the same thing, and then I go for a big workout, I'll come back and measure my my ketone bodies, and they're way down. Right. And I guess it's because I've been using, using my ketones for, exactly. during the workout for energy. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. Exactly what happens. Yeah. So that's kind of my one caveat with. Um, that I would be aware of with you know consuming the S the beta hydroxybutyrate supplemental esters or salts if you want, but um, salts don't work that well. Uh, a, a good point is that um, they've also been shown consuming the um, the exogenous beta hydroxybutyrate has been shown in humans to prevent the uh, use of amino acids from muscle. So oh. it stops and and which also is you know makes sense during a prolonged fast. Your body has mechanisms at play that help prevent you from, you know, using muscle, using proteins and amino acids from your muscle as energy. And one of those is that, you know, the, the, the ketone bodies prevents that from happening. So that's a good thing. But so there's a trade-off yeah. potentially. Yep. And if, again, this is something that, um, you know, I don't know how much of a difference it makes, but it's something to keep in mind.
Yep. And if you're an athlete and you're needing fuel, maybe you're a better candidate than someone that's just looking for purely metabolic body-based ketone production. And that's, that's a maybe, but right. it's a factor.